Only let me say something. Maybe, maybe no. Maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow. And maybe not the next month. But oh, only one thing is true. I will be champion one day. I promise. I promise. Most fighters will claim to be an underdog. And in the life of a mixed martial artist, most of them probably have some experience in that regard. It's practically a guarantee. But the reigning UFC flyweight champion Brandon Moreno embodies the term underdog in a way that totally sets him apart. This is the rise from prospect to contender to champion that no one saw coming. But ask anyone now who the number one flyweight in the UFC is and they'll know it's Brandon Moreno. Nothing about Moreno's earliest years in the sport foreshadowed what would follow. His childhood was spent in his home city of Tijuana, Mexico, where he was born to a family of modest means, parents who ran a piñata business. By the age of 12, he was drawn to an MMA gym simply because he felt that he needed to lose weight. Towards the later years of his adolescence, it was clear that MMA was his calling. After turning pro, Moreno posted a pretty mediocre 3-3 record in his first six fights. Not a terrible run, but not the type of form that would suggest that Brandon was a major prospect. But if there's one common thread that you'll notice throughout Brandon Moreno's career, it's that his ability to grow and improve beyond his current state is truly phenomenal. And grow he did. All of a sudden, an uninspired 3-3 run led to an 8-fight win streak and a spot on the all-flyweight season of the Ultimate Fighter. When he arrived to the 16-fighter tournament, he was seated as the 16th best fighter in the tournament. In other words, the least likely to win it outright. This meant that Moreno was forced to take on the number one seed, Alessandre Pantoja, in his first fight. And look, Brandon lost that fight, but anyone who tuned in to that opening episode knew full well who he was by the time he was done. Brandon fought his heart out, putting up a shockingly good effort against his highly touted opponent. So the first round starts, and these guys come out throwing hard punches. Both landed big shots. Brandon looked awesome, and I think a lot of people were surprised by his speed and power. And Pantoja was just the smarter fighter. Pantoja realized things weren't going good for him and switched it up. Alexandre took Brandon down and just, man, had his way with him. Opened him up, a little slight crack. <laughs> Slip in the rear naked choke and... His ultimate fighter dream was over. But even though he was technically the 16th seed, Dana White and UFC saw enough to be excited about and signed him. Over his next four fights, Moreno proved that he did in fact belong in the UFC, going 3-1 to one with some solid performance against impressive opposition. There was something likable about the guy. He had a hard-nosed, never-say-die attitude that you just had to root for but a second loss to his old rival Alessandre Pantoja seemed to put Moreno's limits very much into focus. And when the UFC were flirting with the idea of axing the flyweight division altogether, the 3-2 Moreno seemed like an easy pick for an early cut. So the UFC released him from his contract. And for 99% of fighters, that would have been the end of their UFC story. But here's where Brandon Moreno truly began to show his character. A promotional debut in the LFA saw Brandon take on Michael Perez for their flyweight title. Moreno won by TKO in the fourth round to take home the belt. However, the real prize would soon follow. The flyweight division, as it turned out, was not on the chopping board. And when the UFC decided to make a return to Mexico City for a fight night event, signing the 25-year-old Moreno seemed like a total no-brainer. And to the MMA fanbase, it seemed like the right decision. To us, we were getting the return of a fun and likable fighter who never really should have been cut from the UFC in the first place. Sure, he wasn't ever going to win UFC gold, but having a fighter like Brandon Moreno on the roster could guarantee fireworks. At the very least. Or that's what the general consensus was at the time. When Brandon Moreno needs to improve, boy does he improve. And after scoring a draw with the formidable Askar Askarov in his first matchup, he just kept getting better and better going 3-0 against three of the division's finest, Kai Kara France, Jussier Formiga, and Brandon Royval. Before anyone knew what was up, 
This guy, who was rated as the lowest possible seed on the Ultimate Fighter, was competing for a world title. 18 months before this, the dude wasn't even fighting in the UFC. But you could erase all of this doubt from Moreno's past, and he would still be little more than an informed contender being served up to the most powerful flyweight knockout artist who ever lived. People doubted Moreno when he signed on the dotted line to take that fight, and even as he walked to the cage to compete against Davison Figueredo, few, if any, saw him as anything more than a placeholder contender. What happened next was truly shocking. Fight 1 was the greatest back and forth brawl in flyweight history. A truly commendable effort from both men that put Brandon Moreno's name on the map. It was judged a draw due to a point deduction for the champion, but we all learned a lesson about this ever-improving talent on this day. However, Moreno was not done with his improving just yet, far from it in fact. When the inevitable rematch was set, Brandon showed up twice the fighter he was for their first pairing dominating the champion in every facet of the fight on his way to a stunning third round submission. All of a sudden, the UFC had its first Mexican-born champion, and the fighter who had been counted out on so many occasions in the past had finally turned in the performance of a lifetime. But his hard work was not quite done, forcing Brandon to earn interim gold with a finish of Kaikawa France to book his place in there with Figgy for round four. That fourth fight wasn't as thrilling as their first, nor was it as confident or definitive a finish as we got in their second. But by the time Brandon Moreno forced the doctor's stoppage in the third, we knew who we knew who the best fighter was. We knew who the best flyweight on the planet truly was. This was an underdog story for the ages, and as things stand, these flyweight contenders are going to have their 